Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the shores of Loch Morlick. A chilly one this morning. Very chilly indeed, about minus two. There's snow on the tops behind the camera there. You know, I had thought this morning that I would shoot um, the Cairngorm Mountains and, and the loch. Um, a couple of days ago I came and the, 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 the loch was, was flat, calm, beautiful conditions. And I, I took a quick um, snap with my phone, but nothing more. And um, I did think this morning I would, I would start the day off by shooting that vista, but do you know what? We've got blue sky, um, very, very little cloud about, and the water's quite choppy, so I'm not going to bother. Um, you might ask the question, why didn't I do it when I arrived? And the reason for that is when I get to a location, I tend to want to relax and, and get, get a feel for the place and not rush directly into taking images. I find that when I do that, I don't enjoy myself quite so much. I'd rather just enjoy being immersed in the location, maybe do a few runs, a um, few walks, visit the local cafes, and just, just get into um, being in a more of a relaxed state. Um, I even took a dip in the lake um, a couple of days ago, which was lovely. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to have a walk along the shoreline and then head off into the some Scots Pine woods just on the fringe of the lock here and then head into the woodland where uh, I, w I was yesterday and see what I can find in there. So come along and let's see what we can find. So let's face it, in the right conditions, this would form the basis for a lovely shot. Beautiful, old and probably ancient silver birch, all broken and twisted, almost straight out of a movie set. But um, annoyingly, the, the bright sky, which um, intrudes into much of the important parts of the tree just just can't deal with it really can't deal with it had it been lower if you look at the lower levels where the younger birches are behind the birches almost create like a misty sensation behind so had this been in a bit of a, a cleft of a hillside and those birches had been higher up i could have got away with creating the illusion of more more of an ethereal atmosphere but as it stands, there's just nothing I can do with it. And every fibre within my body, my body is, is telling me to, to photograph it, but it just won't work, sadly. So I need to find something else. It would have been really nice this morning, and still might be, if I can find um, a suitable subject for a broader scene, which I'm always looking for. But um, sadly, this one just isn't quite it. So I've been walking for a little while and not really seen anything and the reason for that is I'm struggling with um, the clear sky at this moment in time. It, it's just not lending itself to, to decent photography. And with that in mind, I've, I've walked around the back of a hillside to try and find some shade. And um, just minding my own business walking along the path at the back there. And this is a, obviously a pine plantation. You can tell by the straight straight rows of trees not very inspiring at all but um, in amongst them are some really old Scots pines and right behind the video camera now is one such Scots pine it's pretty amazing I have to say hopefully when I spin the camera around it does it justice but you really need a wide angle lens to really appreciate it so there is the tree my camera ready set up on it Look at that, what a beauty, an absolute beauty. And what I've done 
is I've set the camera up so that it's shielded from the sunlight. You can see the shafts of light coming down the sides um, on either side of the trunk. When I took a picture a few minutes ago that wasn't quite so strong. And um, I'm using the tree as a central feature and in contrast to all the straight um, pine trees, the younger pine trees behind. I'll put this camera up now just on the back of my camera so you can see the composition and uh, I'll talk you through it. So here is the, the image um, all lined up. Um, I've actually taken a couple already and I will continue to keep taking these because um, there'll be a whole host of different options that I, I want to choose from to get the correct image. So that was just taken at f4.5, third of a second, 100 ISO. So in terms of composition you can see that the tree is, is right in the centre of the frame and I, I've done that because the tree's got quite a quite it's quite symmetrical and I think that is really um, enhanced by the pine trees all around it. Now because I've used a wide angle lens you've got all the converging verticals of the straight pines but you can't tell that it's a wide angle lens on the main tree so you've got almost contrast with a tree that looks for all intents and purposes quite normal and then you've got all the converging verticals behind it and I like that contrast. So because I've set the tree with the light coming from behind I can, I can do a little bit of trickery with the composition and I've done this before with other subjects. Now if I darken it down to the correct exposure which on the back of my camera it, it actually looks right about there at minus um, two thirds of a stop and I know it's probably a little bit darker on the video camera but that's where it should be taken. If I dial that up Bearing in mind that I'm f at f4.5, so I've got a very, very shallow depth of field, I can start to burn out the background trees and create the illusion of almost a misty atmosphere and bring some magic into the frame. And I really like that effect there, and at the moment I've just got a, a little patch of sunlight creeping around the back of the tree, so I am going to just take that. I didn't intend on using one with sunlight on, the ones that I took earlier I felt were quite nice, so I'll probably make a decision on that later at the PC. So that's pretty much it really. The, the, the main camera's tilted um, up to looking into the canopy which exa exaggerates the converging verticals of the pine behind and that's really important to do to create that. If you've got a wide angle lens it's always worth tilting it down and looking at, looking at the landscape and also tilting it up. The place that wide angle lens don't really have much effect is when you're looking at them straight so always remember to tilt them up and down when you're framing your shots. So I've taken a few at different apertures and what I'll do is I'll put the best one on now. So I decided to call time yesterday, I just wasn't feeling the conditions, there was lots of clear sky, well unbroken clear sky to be honest, and lots of hot spots all around the woodland and it was just making everything just too difficult and I, and I wasn't enjoying myself so I decided to, to pack it in, um, knowing today was going to be a much better forecast, we got some nice overcast light, some fine rainfall and it's just perfect for the sort of things that I like to photograph. So let's see what, uh, what reveals itself. Oh, the joys of flat light. <laughs> Absolutely love these lighting conditions. So this little spot that I'm now um, full of birch, as you can see, um, and nearly all of them have lost their leaves now. We're well into the back end of the autumn period, so most of the leaves are down on the ground. And you know what's coming now, if you, if you watch my videos regularly, that I love a forest floor photograph, and it would be rude not to when you consider just how much we've actually got on the floor and my camera is already positioned on a photograph. Now when I've been choosing a particular spot 
I've been very, very careful to find a position where I don't have any gaps and where the burr substrate is showing through the soil. I don't mind the odd pine needle because that's part of the, the, um, the scene really, but I've been looking for areas where you've just got nothing but leaves and nothing to distract the eye. And that's exactly what I've got just down here. So I'll get um, this little video camera as per usual and then just show you the composition and just talk about the settings before I put it on. So here's the frame that I've chosen. The video camera is just rendering it a little bit more contrasted than it actually is. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty much, for all intents and purposes, uh, an image that's just full of birch leaves and lots of different lovely shades of, of copper and gold and browns and yellows. Um, really beautiful, simple scene. Typically one of those wallpaper type images that, uh, that, that look great when they adorn your, your, um, your, your desktop on your PC. Now, as per usual, um, it's inevitable that you're going to get one leaf that, uh, that stands uh, head and shoulders above the rest and that's that one there, the one in the middle and it's just to draw you in, just to pull you into the scene. Uh, weirdly the, the outer edges have actually got a natural vignette and, and that's something that I, I often put on my images but if, if I don't have to then I won't and this, this one it, it naturally lightens as it goes towards the centre and I really love that. Um, this is my 120mm macro lens and in terms of settings there you go so it's 100 ISO f16 and a sixth of a second. This is a focus stack um, I started the focus stack with this stalk of the main leaf here and then I worked down the stalk and then just down here on the bottom left there's quite a deep area of the scene that I, that I, that I finished my stack on so that's the high point there and the low point there and it's a stack of about four images. At f16 I probably didn't need it but I've taken them anyway just, just to give me that guarantee. So I'll put that image on now. So firstly I'm going to apologise for the traffic noise, I'm literally 20 yards from a very very busy main road um, and I'm actually at the side of a car park so these, these um, sandy tracks here are basically routes from the car park down to the uh, Loch Morlick beach and I came to this tree here basically on the first day we arrived and there was something about it that I just can't leave alone and I'm going to try and photograph it and I'm going to open the image up for discussion because I'm not 100% sure there's, there's definitely something I like about it um, and, and I usually listen to that intuition and it'll be interesting to see how the final image translates because on the back of the LCD the, the image that I've just taken I'm just not sure so basically what <coughs> I'll get my bag off basically what I've got is this tree is the main component it's positioned off to the right hand side and then you sort of look through these arching branches into the mysterious dark beyond now what I like about this main feature what this main feature tree that's drawn me to it is you've got all these fingers of um, 
of branches, it's a birch by the way, these branches that are covered in lichens and they just look like fingers coming down to the ground. There's just something really creepy and mysterious about it. It's got a real character. And like I say, the, the overarching branches just help frame that left hand side and draw you through. But I'm not sure if reflecting upon it, whether this tree is just too strong that it's going to stop you looking beyond it and that's that's what's um, niggling with me I suppose. I'll get um, the composition up now and you can just see it before I put the final image on but uh, like I said there's just something about it that I like and that, and usually I find that if you pay attention to that feeling then it, it's normally a, a pretty decent picture but not very often is the case that I don't, I don't know for sure on location. Usually by the time I press the shutter and I review the, the scene, I, I'm nine times out of ten, I'll know absolutely yes or absolutely no. Very, very rarely do I fall somewhere in between the two. So I'm taking a bit of a gamble on this one. So I'll show you the back of the LCD now. So I've actually had to lower down um, the main stills camera because the video camera tripod just isn't tall enough to reach the, the, where I need to be to show you the live view. So in doing that, well, this little white spot here has now come into, into view, whereas when the, when the tripod is much higher, that's actually not, not visible. But um, just bear with, the, the main components of the composition are exactly as it was, apart from the background um, has, has come into view because of lowering the, uh, the main tripod. So as you can see, I've positioned this main character off to the right hand side and you see all these fingers of branches coming down like I say that really make it look creepy and then you've got this big overarching branch here that just sort of fingers out um, to the left hand side and this is the area that I'm questioning, this central bit I'm just not sure if there's enough going on, enough mystery to make you want to look beyond that and as to whether this tree actually is too strong, too dominant to make your eye want to make that visual journey. That's the question I'm posing. In terms of settings, I'm on F8, so it's really picking out this main feature and making sure all of this part of the tree is sharp and it does soften ever so slightly because of F8, the far distant background, but all these branches here on the left um, are nice and sharp in focus. It's almost like a gatekeeper type image if you want to put a name to it. Um, I'm not really overly keen on doing that with my pictures, but it just reminds me that, that this, this tree is, is, is the gatekeeper of the entranceway into this more mysterious part of the woodland beyond. My lens that I'm using is my uh, 45 to 85 mil lens, like I say, 100 ISO, f8 and a third of a second. Um, and I'll put the image on now. So hopefully you can see the light is starting to develop into this beautiful glow and I'm hoping it doesn't snuff out. I'm going to just walk down the beach a little bit, get away from the mallards because they're creating waves. The lock is so calm right now and it'd just be nice to finish the video off with, um, with a nice landscape shot. I think we could be in. Right, camera's all up and ready. I've got an aperture of f11, 100 ISO and a fifth of a second. I've got my nodal rail on because I'm going to do a panoramic stitch and I'm starting probably about there. Camera's all lovely and level. Zoom into 100%, check the far trees, make sure they're nice and sharp. I'm on 80mm focal length and start taking the images, overlapping each frame by about half 
Now what I'm conscious of is that as I'm panning across some of the brighter portions of the sky are tending to burn out ever so slightly and what's really annoying is that the little um, M50 there that I'm filming this on can handle that dynamic range. It's only clipping ever so slightly but it's clipping nonetheless. Now what I'm going to do, I've taken that sweep, is I'm going to go back and I'm going to underexpose the shot by a stop and do the whole thing again. This camera does far better at recovering the details in the shadows than it does the highlights. So I'll put that image on now. So that's it, the light has gone. It's snuffed out as quick as it came. The ducks came along in the end and wreaked havoc with my composition. There's was, there was ripples everywhere and uh, the rain's actually starting now. So I need to get going. Let me know what you think of um, today's images, particularly that, uh, that one of the tree. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I'll put all the images on in just a second. But as always, don't forget to subscribe, leave some comments below about all the other images and um, and don't forget to ring the bell for those all-important notifications. So until next time, I will see you in the next one. Okay, bonus image time. It's never over until it's over. Just look at that over there. Can you hang on just one second? I'm going to have to fight with everything now to just try and give you what's happening. So look at that light over there. And it's translating so well on my camera. Uh, darken that down just a touch more. I forgot to mention before, I've got two neutral density filters on the shot. I've got one 0.6 on the top, holding this top holding the top back, and one 0.3 neutral density graduated filter on the bottom. And that's really quite arty, and that's lovely in my book. I wasn't expecting that. And that just goes to show that you should never, ever give up until there's literally nothing left. I can't really show you that as well as I'd like to on the back of the camera, but essentially that is, um, let me just darken that down, on the back of the camera, it's something like that, I'd say, the rain falling, really beautiful. Lovely conditions. I'm just going to continue taking shots while it lasts and then I'll put the best one on. Bye for now.